Good morning. Good morning. Truly, it's a blessing to be in God's house one more time. Truly, it's good to be in God's house one more time. And, and I tell you, the reason I'm so happy this morning, the reason that I'm so happy this morning is not because I won the Powerball last night, because I, I forgot to get a ticket. I didn't win the Powerball last night. But the reason I'm so happy this morning is it's not because I switched to Geico and saved 30% on my insurance. I didn't do that. I still have American family. I'm still in good hands. But the reason I'm so happy this morning is because I got joy. Joy. And you know, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And you know, the world can't take it away. Sickness may come your way. Death may come your way. Prejudice may come your way. Envy, jealousy may come your way. But you know what? We serve a God. We serve a mighty God. Now, I'm just here to tell you that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be today? See, we serve a God who never shows favoritism. We serve a God that as long as praises goes up, his blessings do come down. I'm so glad when he said it to us, let us come. Let us go into the house of the Lord. For we come in this house to praise God. We come in this house to have a better relationship with God. We come in this house to fellowship among each other. I was glad when he said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Again, we say to you, good morning. Good morning. And for those who are also listening, good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, God's people, rejoice and be glad in it. Will someone say amen? Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from the 92nd number of Psalms, starting at the first verse. And it reads as thus. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lower. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your works. At the works of your hand, I sing for you for joy. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his holy word. Shall we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father God, we come before you today with bow down heads. But Father, we come thanking you for the many and many blessings which thou hast bestowed upon us. For we realize and recognize that all good and perfect gifts come from you, my Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you as you allowed us to lay down last night, as we lay in our beds, sometimes sleeping, sometimes tossing and turning, wondering what tomorrow is going to bring. But it's good to know that we serve a God who never sleeps nor slumber. So I thank you, Father God, as we lay down last night. You kept all hurt, harm, and danger away from us. But most of all, my heavenly Father, you kept the deaf angel away one more time. For we know that a deaf angel tried to touch someone last night. But you told the old deaf angel to get back. This is still my child. But they have work to be done, my Heavenly Father. So I thank you for just another day's journey, dear God. Heavenly Father, today we ask and pray you come in this place, God. Come in this church called Antioch, dear God. Bless from the pulpit to the congregation, to the congregation, to the back door, to the back door, to the parking lot, dear God. Have thy own way, my Heavenly Father. Come in like only you can, dear God. Come in and touch 
and heal like only you can, dear God. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask and pray you bless our pastor, dear God, as you prepare to preach the word, dear God. Allow him to decrease so you may increase in him, my Heavenly Father. Today, my Heavenly Father, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Anything in this church, dear God, is not of you, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. All hatred, jealousy, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way. Come in in this place, dear God. Bless the ones that are going to sing songs of praise to you, God. May there be a message in these songs that they sing, dear God. Have their own no way, Father God. For we know that we can't do nothing without you, dear God. But with you, my Heavenly Father, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us, dear God. So today, my Heavenly Father, touch and heal like only you can, dear God. We love you, God. We love you. And we know, Heavenly Father, we can't do nothing until you show up, dear God. Show up in a mighty way, dear God. Show up like only you can, dear God. Bless like only you can, dear God. Thank you, dear God, for what you're about to do, dear God. Thank you, dear God. Now have thine own way. Have thine own way, Father God. Have thine own way. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let all the saints of God say together, thank God. Amen. And amen. Good morning. Uh, we just want to remind you the, to continue to wear your mask uh, throughout the service. And also, uh, we maintain social distancing. And, um, and just limit your walking if you could as well. Thank you this morning. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I said praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you're excited to be in the house of God this morning, could you give God some praise? Come on, he kept you through another week. How many people know we serve a great God? Come on. Oh, say oh. Say oh. Come on, could you stand up and help me worship our God this morning? Everybody clap your hands. Say oh. Say oh, say oh. I need your help to help me sing this song. It's simple. It says, How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All will sing. How great, how great is our God? It's a song we all know. I need your help to help me sing it. Come on, how great is our God. Andy, I could you lift your voice with me? Come on, everybody see how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great, how great is our God. And all will see. All will see how great, how great is our God. I just need you to follow me right here. It's a simple song. It says this. Say, I lift my head. I lift my head. To give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give you praise. To give you praise. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise I got you, a Lord. question. Will you praise? Yes. I need everybody to stand yes. up and help me with this. Come on. I lift my head. I lift my head. To give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my head. I lift 
better than that. Give God some praise in this place on this morning. We thank God for this opportunity to be in worship on this morning. We want to just come and just say good morning to each and every one of you. Those of you that are here in person and those of you that are watching online, we thank God for uh, each and every one of you being here. This new normal of way of worshiping. Amen. This new normal of worship. Now, now some things ain't changed. God is still God. Amen. Come on, God is still God, amen? And some, one thing I learned about, uh, learned during this pandemic was that you have to be at a place in your life where you can give God the praise regardless of what's going on. It, y'all know what I'm talking about? There would be days when I had to come in here and preach. To, it'd be just me in this place by myself preaching. But I had to not get excited about crowds. I had to get excited about God. Let me say that again. I had to get excited, not about the crowd, but about God, because God is still the same God. How many of you know that? He's still the same God. And we're excited today. Today is uh, another day that we've never seen and we'll never see again. Amen. But we thank God. We continue to uh, continue to continue to thank God and just to give him the praise in spite of what might be going on around us. And we're grateful to God for this opportunity just to be here in this place one more time. Do you also know that today is what they call Pentecost Sunday? Today is what they call Pentecost. You know, Christians ought to be excited about Pentecost. Amen. Christians ought to be excited about what took place at Pentecost. And I'm excited this morning that we are here and we're in worship on this Pentecost Sunday. And I'm going to ask that uh, Minister Corey come and he uh, lead us through what Pentecost is. Uh, then he, Then after that, we'll have just a, a, a prayer, and you. I want you to stand wherever you are, and uh, maybe, uh, not even maybe, there might be some things that we want to just ask God for. Amen? Uh, but there's some things we want to ask God for, like I, I've been praying with Sister Ernestine uh, Baylor, and we want to pray God continue to keep his hands a protection over our sister Annette. Uh, that she just make a speedy recovery. We've been praying with her and just, just petitioning God on her behalf. And Ernestine, we're petitioning God on your behalf. And then there's those of you that might be experiencing some things. And if, if you don't, if you don't, after Corey finishes, we're going to just have, uh, uh, before he prays, I, I want you just to call out before God what it is that you're needing or what it is that you're asking God to do in your life. Sometimes we don't always have to uh, get to that place where we are, are uh, desiring something from God. Sometimes we just want to tell God, thank you. Sometimes we just want to tell him, thank you for what he's done and how he's done it in our life and how he continues to move in our life. And we're just believing God to do that. Ain't that right, Darrell? We just believe in God for him to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, Corey, come on and uh, just uh, lead us through that, and then we'll fire that off at the end. Thank you, Jesus. Many of us know 
what Pentecost is, but if you don't, it's 50 days after Easter. And Pentecost is where they had a gathering, just as we are assembled today. And it's when the Holy Ghost fell. And it's something about when the Holy Ghost falls. But it says that they were all on one accord. And today we can all be on one accord. And we're believing and trusting God that whatever's going on in our brother and our sister and even in our own lives, that he can do it. And so I don't know about you, but I want my sister to be delivered. I want my sister to be healed. I want my brother to be delivered. And I want my brother to be healed. And I want myself to be delivered. And I want myself to be healed. And so today on Pentecost Sunday, I'm just asking that you will be on one accord today. Just let us pray together. Let us believe together that something's going to happen today. And if you don't mind, I'm going to ask everybody to stand with us. If you can, can you just stand? I know that we can't touch and agree physically because of what's going on in the world, but this, God said on one accord. And so if you don't mind, just lift your hands and believe God for what you're needing. And so God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you today. God, we thank you for allowing us to make it here today, God, because some did not make it. God, some didn't make it to where they wanted to be, but God, you allowed us to make it here to the house of God today. And so God, we say thank you. God, we're trusting God. Whatever we have before you, God, that you're gonna do it, God. You said if two or more are gathered together in your name, God, you're gonna be in the midst. And so God, us being on one accord, God, I'm asking God, God, that you will touch us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all that he is saying, in the name of Jesus, heal right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody's heart needs fixing. And so, God, we're trusting you to do it, God. Somebody has backslid, and God, we're trusting you, God, that you'll pull them on back in. Somebody's mother is praying for their sons and daughters. And God, we're praying, God, God, that you will lead them and guide them to you, oh God. God, you said that I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so God, we're praying for deliverance now, oh God. Do it now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're doing it now, oh God. You're doing it now, oh God. We trust in you, oh God. We trust in you, oh God. Heal now in the name of Jesus. Heal now in the name of Jesus. You're healing now, oh God. Oh God, align bodies with your word, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we're crying out to you, oh God. God, that somebody's being healed today. Back problems no more, God. Blood pressure no more, God. Diabetes no more, God. Migraines no more, oh God. Depression no more, oh God. Anxieties no more, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, destroy the yoke of the enemy now, God. Destroy the yoke of the enemy now, oh God. We trust you at the word, oh God. We trust you at the word, oh God. In the name of Jesus, you're doing it now, God. You're doing it now, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we trust in God for our brothers and sisters, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, repeat it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, God. Right now, oh God. Oh God, we're bowing heads and lifting our hands high, God. Because God, we know that you can do it. We trust that you will do it, God. God, our faith is in nobody but you, oh God. Because we tried mama and mama couldn't do it. We tried daddy and daddy couldn't do it. We tried grandma and grandpa, but they just couldn't do it. And so God, now we're turning to you. We're turning to you, God.
You just healed God. You just delivered God. You just gave somebody finances that they were looking for, God. Oh, God, and so we thank you today, oh, God. Oh, God, you're doing it. I feel something breaking in the room. You're doing it now, oh, God. He about Oh, the devil has no place in him. He has no reign in him. And so, devil, we say you got to go today. Oh, you've raised up your head, but you got to go. He You got to go today, oh God. He has to leave. You have no place in him. And so the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the yoke of the enemy is destroyed. The yoke of the enemy is destroyed. The yoke of the enemy is destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, right where you are, hey. just begin to tell God thank you. Come on, begin to tell God thank you. You're not in your living rooms no more. Come on and just tell God thank you. All of us got a reason to give God some praise in this place. All of us have a reason to give God some praise in this place. Oh, we thank you today, God. We thank you today, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Come on, we can just give 30 seconds of praise. Come on, come on. I know we ain't been in here for a while, but there's a sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for you being God. Thank you for you being God. Come on, 15 more seconds. Thank you for me, you being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, it is so. It is so, it is so. Wherever you are, if you're in your living room, it is so. If you're in the kitchen, it is so. If you're at work, it is so. It's so right now in the name of Jesus. That son, that daughter, it is so. That healing, it is so right now. In the name of Jesus. God is a deliverer right now in the name of Jesus. Things happen when you begin to give God praise. Things happen when you begin to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we trust you in this place right now. We trust you in our living rooms right now. We trust you on our jobs right now, God. We trust you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Come on one more time. Let's give God a great big praise. Let's give God a great big praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You may be seated. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What a wonderful and mighty God we serve. We want to just say thank you uh, this morning and welcome to all of our guests and visitors that may be here in this place, uh, maybe here. You got out of here last week so fast, I didn't get to get your name or nothing like that, but I'll get with you after service. I love your spirit of worship. I love how your kids, your family worships. God is a good, it's something about when a family comes together and prays and worships the name of the Lord, amen. It's something about it. It's something about uh, when uh, the spirit of the Lord falls in, in this place. Just a couple of things I wanna, I mentioned this morning, once again, to all of our graduates, those that, amen, come on, those that, those that are, that, that, that move from uh, sixth grade to middle school, uh, those that move from middle school to high school, those that move from high school to college or life, amen, and those that move from college to the master's degree or workforce, whatever it might be that you're moving to, uh, those that even went to a trade school, amen, 
to a trade school because everybody ain't everybody don't have that four year degree walk around the halls and all that stuff. Some people got trade school in them and, and can get it done that way. Whatever you graduated from, if you graduated from a bad attitude to a new attitude, amen. Come on, somebody. If you if you just said, I'm not going to do that no more. We want to say congratulations. I see T over there shouting. She said, I'm not going to do that no more. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is you graduated from, uh, whatever it is that you've done, uh, we want to just say, uh, <clears throat> we want to say congratulations to you. And there'll be a time uh, I, that our church will come together and just celebrate with each and every one of you uh, in a no way. I mean, I, I'm so I was praying so hard, Sister D, that COVID would not mess this graduation up for so, this year for some people. Amen. Because I we had a lot of people that we knew that COVID messed some stuff up last year and they had to come back and redo some things. But we were just praying. I was praying that COVID wouldn't get it this year and it didn't get it. And so we're just excited about it. I want to tell you, I want to tell you this and I'm going to have our, our, our team come and minister to us this morning. Uh, you got to get used to, and this is kind of what the message is about. You got to get used to this new normal of worship, this new way of worship. Pastor will be talking to the camera and talking to you at the same time. Come on, uh, and you gotta you gotta learn. This is this a tell is your worship. Remember that song we used to sing? Is your worship for real? Is my worship for real? If I do, I need a a full blown band to worship, or do I need just to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me? And and you got to get used to that. So uh, uh, where you're sitting is fine. If you don't want to be on camera, you ask Raymond or. Uh, somebody you say, okay, where am I going to be able to sit where I won't be on camera, whatever it is. But please know that we're we're going live. We're videoing some stuff as we go. And we're trying to work through some things to put forward a product that God is pleased with. Amen. That God is pleased and that, pe that, that people can watch wherever they are. We have people watching all across this country now. Folk, folk, folk are, are, are emailing across the country saying, I enjoy your word. We might have uh, 40, 50 people watch it live, but when you look at the back end of our of our feed, that means the stuff that happens after it goes on. We hit almost a thousand clicks, a thousand views. People across the country are watching us, getting the word. God is up to something, y'all. God is up to something from this little bitty church in Topeka. God is doing some things. So that's what we're trying to do. Keep it Keep it the best of both worlds. So our praise team is getting ready to come. They're going to worship. Uh, they're going to lead us through some through a couple of uh, things. I'm going to come and preach, and then we'll get ready to get out of here. We're going to try to keep it between an hour, hour, five, hour, ten minutes so that we can get in and out of here and, and be able to continue to practice our social distancing. But don't make them work so hard. You participate. They're not here to entertain you. You got dressed, put on your good dress today. Some of y'all are happy you get to get dressed. You put on your good clothes, whatever it is that you did this morning, participate in worship. Leave something here at the altar. God bless you. Come on, y'all. If you don't mind, if you feel like standing, will you stand with us in worship? And the song just says that victory belongs to Jesus. We owe it to nobody but him. For everything that he's done for us, we owe it all to him. And so just worship with us today. The song says, Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. If you know it, just sing it with me. Who can stand against the king? No one can. And no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus, and 
victory belongs to him. Come on, who can stand against the Lord? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one can. And no one will. And no one will. Who can stand against the king? Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one can. And no one will. No one will. Come on, let's lift up a war cry. To Jesus. And it belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Say victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. And it belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Come on. Oh. that it will go no void today, oh God. God, that your people will hear what you have to say to them today, oh God. Strengthen our pastor today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Victory belongs to Jesus and victory belongs to him. We are so grateful for this. Father, we thank you today for who you are and for what it is that you've done for us in our life. We thank you, God, that you are yet in control. We thank you for uh, just pausing long enough just to pause today to give your name the praise and give your name the glory. We ask and pray, God, that you would just touch our hearts and our minds, that we will be receptive to the word that you're going to share. Bless those that are listening online. Bless those that are watching across this country. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
I've, I've heard it. I've heard it said um, so many times over the past uh, fifteen months. And I'm sure if you just take time to think about it, you have heard it too. But over the past fifteen months, I mean, I've been in different settings, and uh, individuals have said, uh, um, "I just can't wait." Till things get back to normal. Uh, they've, they've either said it about a, a work environment, they've said it about a family gathering, that people said I can't uh, be with my family the way I used to, and so I can't wait for things to get back to normal. They talk about their house, how they're, they're doing things from home that they normally would not do. Y'all, y'all know, if y'all, have y'all heard that? I mean, they're, they're talking about, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Has anybody heard that? Has anybody, okay, all right. I see, I, I can't wait for things to get back to somewhat normal too, where I can look at if your mouths are moving or whatever. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. And when, when I, every time I hear that, I, um, I, I, I agree with that. But then after a while, I started asking the question, what does normal look like? What what, what does normal look like? I mean, like when you think about it over the past 15 months, over the past 15 months, uh, we've had to go through wearing masks. I mean, you just look around this room today, look around this this sanctuary today that we have on mask and we're social distanced and we're six feet apart. In some cases, uh, we have to cluster together. We have to be around people that we know. We've had to change some things publicly, but then personally, we've had we've had to watch this work from home. Anybody had to work from home? Uh, and, and then you had to do this thing that has been driving people crazy. Uh, Zoom. Anybody else tired? Of, well, anybody else tired of Zoom? Anybody do Zoom? Uh, Zoom fatigue. People have Zoom fatigue. I mean, I get more invites now for meetings on Zooms. This seems like I'm in more meetings now than I was before I went before meetings stopped. Because now people are able to send you a link, and 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 you get on the link and participate in that meeting and be off and not even have to drive and do some things. Uh, uh, professionally, there's some, there's some corporations that are discovering they got more work from y'all at home. They got more work from y'all at home than they did when y'all were sitting at the desk. Do you realize that? And they're starting to say, now, I wish I wish I wouldn't. I don't have to bring them back. I've been in meetings where they're trying to figure out how to give y'all computers and stuff so y'all can work from home. Somebody said, I like that. But that but but listen, there's some some things per, professionally, but then there's some things personally. I mean, many of us have had to go through some mental challenges. If you're like me, you like to talk to folk. You 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 like to you like to. Uh, to uh to see your neighbor and be able to spend a little time and and do all those things and and if you're having to uh if you're having to go to church online and watch online and you're not able to see all your brothers and sisters that messes with you personally there's some things that just literally there's been a lot of mental struggles over these past 15 months there's uh the the depression rate has gone up significantly People have committed suicide and people are struggling with some things. I personally have a friend that took his life during this period of time because of the struggles that were going on in his life. Some stuff has changed personally. But then also corporately, as we sit down and we think about it, even in worship. As a church, I mean, to be last Sunday, we talked about it. We've been out of this building for 15 months. And when we come back into the building, it, it did not feel the same. Or we, we, we come back in and we're having to do things differently. We're having the social distance. And one of the things I couldn't wait to do was to get to church and get hugs from some of y'all and to, and to, and, and to communicate with some of you. And we're having to practice doing that different. So I, I, I asked the question once again, well, what, what does normal look like? What, what, what does normal look like? 
in your life, in your, in your, in your interactions, in this church? What, what does normal look like? And, and, and can I suggest, can I suggest, can I suggest that God is doing a new normal? Can, can I suggest that you will have missed the importance of the past 15 months if you run back to what you did and you continue to do it the same way? You, you, you would have missed all that God wanted you to gain and, and gleam over the past 15 months if you jump out of it and go right back to where you were before. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're helping me. And, 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 and that's, why, that's why it's important for us to look at it this morning. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 through 21. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 through 21. It's a familiar passage of scripture, but this week as I was going through my devotion, the Lord showed me some, some, some freshness from it to put into our context right now. And I, w- I want you to grab this. I want you to grab this. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 through 21. A familiar passage, but I, I want you to look at it from a different perspective this morning. He, he, it says this, we're talking about Elijah and Elisha. It says, so he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Saphat, who was plowing with the 12 yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak, meaning his, his cape, if you please, upon him. And he left the oxen, talking about Elisha, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from, the, he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. The new normal. What, what, what does the new normal look like? Here in this morning in our text, we, we find a, a, a fellow by the name of Elijah, and we find a fellow by the name of Elisha. Now, Elijah was a prophet. He had performed many miracles throughout uh, uh, the country, and he had, built, he had built his reputation of being God's man. He was the one that God would use to speak to different people. He was the one that God would use to turn situations around. And it was at the time now in Elijah's life where he found himself getting ready to retire. He found himself getting ready to move on to the next level of his life, to move on to the next thing that God would have for him to be and for him to do. And so he goes to the field and no doubt God leads him to this place. He goes to the field and he sees Elisha working with the yoke of oxen. And he walks past Elisha and says, and and, and didn't say nothing, but he threw his cloak around him and his cloak uh, got on him and uh, messed Elisha up in such a way that he began to just be like, what's going on? Messed his world up and said, what, what, what's going on? So then Elisha was so intrigued by what happened that he goes off and he follows Elijah. And he says, listen, let, let me follow you. Listen, let me be a part of what's going on in your life. Let me do that. And Elisha said, no, man, go back home. Now watch this. Elisha was so uh, consumed with what was going on that he said, I, I want to go all in with you. I, I, I want to go all in with what God is doing in this place. And he says, I'm going to burn up that stuff that might cop, stop me from going all in with God. And he burns up those things and he goes back and he begins to follow Elisha. And that brings us to right where we are today in our text and the things that, that, that God is, is speaking to us. Now, listen, first of all, if you're going to adjust to this new normal, you got to recognize, first of all, that it is God. It is God. It is God, not people, not pastor. It is God that is making the shift in your life. 
It is God. It is not people. It is God. It is not people. It is God that is making the shift in your life. If you're not careful, you will mess around and give people too much credit for this shift. I understand we got a coronavirus. I understand the virus is very serious. I understand all of that is taking place. But let me suggest to you that the things that are changing in your life, God can be using this circumstance to get your attention. Eliza was so consumed with what happened that he recognized it was God making the difference or making the change in his life. God, God says it all through scripture. He comes along at times in individuals' life and says, I want to switch. I want to do something different in your life. Look at Isaiah chapter 43 and 19. In Isaiah chapter 43 and 19, he says it this way. He says, behold, I am doing a new thing. He says, God, God shows up on the scenes. He says, wait a minute. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In other words, do you not see it? Do you not believe it that I'm doing something different? Let me ask you, over the past 15 months, has God done anything new in your life? Have you received God doing anything new in your life? He says, he says, I have you not perceived it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in deserts. He says, I'm going to bring some things to some places. Listen, uh, wilderness uh, are places where they used to take people to and leave them to die. God says, I'm going to, if you find yourself in the wilderness, that, that's good shouting right there. If you find yourself in the wilderness, he says, I'm going to make a way in that wilderness. I'm going to leave you out of places where people bring you to die. I'm, I'm, I'm making a way in the wilderness and watch this. I'm bringing forth a uh, rivers, not water, rivers. There's a difference between a well and a river. <laughs> he says, I'm bringing rivers in dry places. And some of you have some dry places in your life. But thanks be to God, he says, I'm bringing you not some, not a, 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 not a well where you drop something down and pull it up. He says, I'm bringing you a river. And so one has to understand that the Lord is making the shift in your life. And let me suggest to you this morning, you have to be willing to take the shift. You, you, you have to be willing to take the shift. And some of y'all say, next point. But, but before I move on, you have to be willing to take the shift. And not only personally, but corporately. God is doing some new things in this church. This is going to be a new season. Where we're going to have to figure out how to do some stuff. And it won't be the same way. But how many of you know we'll be worshiping the same God? Let me, let me say that again. It, it might not be the same way, but we'll be worshiping the same God. Number two, you've got to identify the things that could be hindering you from embracing what the Lord is trying to do in your life. Immediately when Elijah, when Elisha hears and, and, and gets touched by this cloak, he identifies some stuff in his life that could stop him from going and pursuing after and totally committing his life to Elijah and to God. He says, wait a minute, there's some stuff that I might be able to fall back on or there's some things within me that might stop me from receiving this new adjustment that God is making in my life. I ask you this morning, what's, what's stopping you from totally going all in? What, what, what's totally stopping you from embracing this change that God has been taking you through the past 15 months? Some of you, God, deliberately shut down your job so that you might begin to look at getting another job. But you work so hard to get that job, keep that job going, you're sitting there in a the dead season. Y'all don't, don't like that, huh? There's, there's some things that he intentionally wants to change, but because we're so used to normal, we won't embrace the new normal. <clears throat> what, 
What's, what, what, what areas are you struggling with? Do you struggle with doubt? Do you struggle with the fact, do, do I doubt? Do you doubt yourself and do you doubt God? There's no way that God could use me to do this. There's no way I can get that done. I'm just, come on, I, 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 I'm just, or I don't have, and we begin to doubt. Are, are, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? Could, could comfort, being comfortable stop you from pursuing the things that God will want you to pursue? Not wanting to shake up things. And there's nothing wrong with being comfortable. But when being comfortable stops you from seeing and hearing God, that's a problem. Sometimes God wants to shift up and mess up some stuff in our life. I, 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 I'm not comfortable. Uh, I was com- well, rather, I was comfortable having church the way we had it. Chuck, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like the fact coming in here preaching to cameras and to lights. But sometimes God shifts up some stuff and messes up our areas of comfort and tries to pull us out of our comfort zone. Try it this week. Go to work a different way. Drive down a different street, Deb. Drive, drive a different way. Drive, 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 drive a different way, Harry, to work. Do, do something different. Make a different sandwich. Go get something different to eat for lunch. Try to do something different and see what different does for you. you God can be saying to us, Chuck, we're too comfortable. We're, we're, we're just too comfortable. Uh, 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 the Lord is trying to do some things. Has, uh, has, he, has he been shifting people in your life? I mean, people that you thought would be your ride or die. <laughs> They, they, they got on the next thing, leaving on the midnight train to Georgia. Come on, somebody. They, 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 they left out here faster than your head could spin. I'm talking about the ones that said they would always be there for you. And as soon as a little turbulence showed up in their life, they got out of there. And God is saying, listen, I, you didn't need them in the first place, number one. But then I, then, then, then I, had, I had to remove them. So that now you might be able to see me. Uh, see, because you saw them as your blessing. But God says, I'm the one who is your blessing. And as long as you continue to see them, you're not going to give me the glory that I need. So I had to pull some people out of your life. And he does that individually. He does it corporately. Because watch this, Antioch, if we're not careful, we can look to people instead of looking to God. Yes, I'm familiar. Yes, I'm aware that people may be leaving. But God is still God. And sometimes God has to pull some things in order for us to be able to increase. I I started planting. Y'all drive by my my house, my house, Lucy. Lucy, it, it, it has, it has, it has some flowers in front of it. Granny, granny, I got some flowers in front of my, my house now. I, I started planting, me and my daughter, we, we got us some roses and flowers in front of our house. Deb, drive by. First of all, you're going to notice that my, my grass is green. You remember it used to be, you remember it used to be dust. Chuck used to cut it and have to take a shower afterwards. But now it's green and plush and my neighbors wave at me. They, they wave at me while they go by. Hey, now. They say, they're probably saying it's about time you did something. It only took you 17 years. But watch this. I, I discovered something. Uh, me and my daughter have, have been planting, and we have some plants that we, we've been planting, and uh, I, they weren't growing right. And so the man across the street, he's real good at planting. Uh, so I asked him to come take a look at him. And when he came over, Joseph, Lu, Lu, I mean, when he came over, Jody, he, he came over, and he, he, the first thing he did, was he pulled up what was there and he started digging deeper. And then when he dug deeper, he put what was once there back in and then he put the soil back on top and then he began to take off. I mean, I said, hey man, I paid $3 for that plant. I said, that's good money. 
He began to rob her. He began to pull off some stuff all around it, Uncle Steve. And he, he pulled it off in such a way that now when I looked at it, I said, hey, man, that don't look like no flower. He said, that's okay. It's rooted. And if you keep giving it water, He said, it's rooted, Corey. He said, and if you keep giving it water and some time, it'll start growing. And, 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 and you know, I walked out there the other morning and I looked at that plant and it started, it had, it had buds. It had color to it. It had leaves on it. And I stood back and I sat back there and looked at that thing. I said, I, I remember what it looked like when it went through it. But thanks be to God, I didn't give up on it while it was being planted. Because if I'd have gave up while it was planted, I would have never been able to enjoy the things that it's become. Can I suggest to you that God could possibly be removing people and things and stuff from your life and from this church and from places and people all around us that it might look bad right now but oh if you keep giving us water if you keep feeding us if you keep receiving what God has for you God says it's going to grow <laughs> And when God begins to make things grow, I don't care what storm comes. <laughs> I don't care what happens. It's going to begin to grow. So, so, so you got to identify the things that could be stopping you. And fear could be one of them, too. Fear, fear, fear could be one of them, too. Uh, uh, your possessions could be one of them. Some of us just like stuff. My, my, my wife used this time to go through her closet. Let me suggest, uh, it's, been a, it's been a journey, uh, but, 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 but she, she, she's taking bags and bags, Uncle Steve, and giving them to people and being blessings to them. And, and, but, watch, but watch this. When it, seems like, it seems like the more stuff she gives away, the more the Lord just brings back. She'll, they'll have a sell at Dillard's and the Lord just bring it back. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't know nothing about that that, that. that sometimes we have to give some things away, Norma, in order for God to return it back to us. And that, that's in the physical, but what about if I just started loving individuals better? What about if I started treating people different in my life, Don? What if I started taking time to be a blessing to others? What if, I, what if I just made a commitment to continue to watch online and regardless of what was going on? What about if I just did those things in my life? God says, listen, I'll return it back to you. So our possessions are one. Uh, and then, 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 then number, th- number three, uh, not only must we identify the things that could hinder us from embracing what the Lord is trying to do in our life, recognize the, what, uh, when the Lord is making a shift but number three, we got to get rid of the excuses. In, in, the, in the best fraternity uh, known to man, Uncle Steve, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, uh, we, we have a saying, we have a saying that says excuses are tools used by the incompetent. Those that use them seldom accomplish anything. And if, if you live in excuses, you won't get nothing done. Sometimes you got to get rid of the excuses of why you can't and just do it. You, you, well, I'm going to go back to the gym when I, I'm, I'm going to start reading more when I, I'm going to start saving money when I, I'm going to stop, stop drinking when I, I'm going to stop lying so much when I, come on. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to be more involved in church. I'm going to be more involved in commitment when there's, when there's room for me to be a part of. Listen, sometimes we got to stop making excuses and just get involved in it. Sometimes we got to ma- stop making excuses and just get it done. Get up and go to the gym. Ain't nothing stopping you from going to the gym. There's 24 hour gyms. You get off at 10 o'clock at night, get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to the gym. 
There's nothing stopping you. Ain't nobody forcing you to do what you're doing. You're doing what you want to do because you want to do it. You want to have you want to have a bad attitude. You keep your attitude. Come on, y'all. You attitudes are by choice. Can nobody make your attitude bad? You choose to want to have a bad attitude. You have a bad attitude. I know I'm right, but I'm probably preaching. Okay, all right. Listen, he gets rid of his excuses. What does he do? Watch what Elijah does. Elisha says, I'm going to burn up anything that will give me the excuse to go back to where I was. I'm burning it up. What in your life do you have to burn up, Don? What, what Harry, what, what do you have to burn up in your life so that you won't go back? Sometimes it's too easy to fall back into our old habits. We keep that bottle in the cabinet behind the refrigerator up around the corner behind the cereal. But we stop drinking. But we keep it there just in case. Come on, somebody. Keep that extra pack of cigarettes in the garage behind the flower pot. Just in case. We keep his or her number in the back room. I'm talking to the people online. I'm not, I'm not talking to, to nobody up in here. I'm talking to those online. Just in case there's a rainy day. But Philippians 3.13 says it this way. Forget those things which are behind and press forward for those things that lie ahead. And the last thing is this. You have to surrender to the new way of normal got to be willing to surrender to the new way of normal. I, I, I don't care how big and bad you thought you was, but there was a little bitty lady at Walmart standing at the door just about this time. And during the pandemic, I don't care how big and bad, Republican, Democrat, white, black, Black Lives Matter, whatever you was, if you, go, if you thought you was walking up in Walmart without a mask on, you had something coming to you. Because she would stand by the door and she would just sit there and just tell you, you got to put on a mask. And if you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't want to wear a mask, you thought you wasn't going to wear a mask said, I don't believe in wearing masks, whatever you thought you thought you was, you wasn't going to be able to shop up in Walmart. Come on, somebody. Unless you put on your mask. And watch this. You, you, you put on the mask. You might not have liked it, but you put it on because Walmart had what you needed. And watch this, the new normal in your life might require you to do some things that you don't like to do, but you'll have to do them because you need them. And because God is asking you to make a shift in your life. So, you might have to love differently. You might have to be more patient. With your husband or your wife or your children who drive cars with grinding brakes. You, 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 you might have to bear one another's burdens a little longer. Might have to get up, put, put up with your pastor trying to do some different things, to do something different, to find out what God is trying for him to, trying to do in this place. But watch this. It might be different, but we serve the same God. So I challenge you this morning as we close. To surrender and submit to the new way, to what God is doing different in your life. I mean, you you might have to communicate with your grandkids a different way. 
If you could keep, if you could keep an open line of communication with your grandkids, wouldn't you want to learn how to Zoom? If you could keep communicating with them, I, I don't like no tick, tickety tock, tock, tick. Tick tock, thank you, T. But T and Tracy be over at the house tick tocking. They put the camera on me, Norman, and I at the. I want to keep communication with him. Vonde back there doing it right now. He, you, you, you have to be willing to adjust in order to keep things from dying down. So my prayer for you this week is that you would get used to this new normal that you would make room for God to do some new things in your life. And and let me look, I'll close with this. New does not mean the bad, that the old was just trash. It's just different. Y'all didn't stop drinking Pepsi when they changed their can, did you? Did anybody stop drinking Pepsi when they changed their can? No, y'all kept drinking it because it was the same product. It's just in a different can. It's the same God. It might just be presented a different way. The same God. It's the same family. It's the same money. It's the same whatever, but you got to receive it in a different way. Let's stand. He's doing a great work. A great work in me. One more time, he's doing. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. A great work in me. You might be here this morning and you're saying, This is the place that you want to be a part of, or you want to make a rec- recommit yourself to. To uh, what God is doing, to the new thing that God is doing. Watch this. First of all, personally, and then publicly and corporately in your life. If that's you, I just want you to get it in your spirit right now where you are and just begin to just pray and ask God to do that great work in you. Do that great work in you. Do that great work in you. That 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 if 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 God is moving in your life, doing something great in your life, He could be moving in your life. Uh, we, we, we want to believe God for that. We want to have Father God, we thank you for those that have just begun to recommit in their life. Those individuals that have begun to move and just uh, start afresh right here, right now. We ask and pray that you would just continue to move and do that great work in their life. That you would continue just to do that great work in their life. Thank you for all that will transpire. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Just before we get ready to go, just before we get ready to go, a uh, couple of things I want to want to say. You can take your seats or whatever you want to do it. Uh, before we get ready to go, I want to want to challenge you to don't forget that on your way out the doors, you can give your your offering. You can give your offering, or you can embrace the new thing that God is doing. The new thing that God is doing, and that's uh, continue uh, talking to the people online. You could t- continue to give online. You could continue to sow that same way, or you could give uh, however the uh, streams of income you're able to give, whatever God is uh, leading you to do. Um, you could give at the back. You could give through uh, uh, give, uh, is it Givelify. You could give through Givelify, or you can... Um, 
uh, you could give the regular way that you used to give. We're, we're pushing you. We're asking you to remain faithful in the area of giving that way. And then also, too, tell, tell people about what's taking, on, taking place. Uh, you tried it out. Y'all have been, the, uh, for lack of better words, the, the people that have been bold enough to come. Tell them, say, it's, it's, a, it's a good worship service. It's a good experience. God's doing something different. Uh, it's a different feel. Bring somebody with you. Tell them, we ain't in there all day. We're in and out, and we're worshiping God. Now, they still have the capability to join us online, and we're working through a couple of things. But be patient. God is not through with us yet. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God keep you. I want you to have a strong week this week. I want you to have a week that just brings praise and glory to God. Can y'all do that? Can I mean, can you just do something that brings glory to God? I mean, be nice to somebody that you want to be mean to. And that might start as soon as you get in the car. You're looking at every mirror and you start, be nice to yourself. Amen. Be nice to yourself. Can't nobody love you but you. Amen. Be nice to yourself. So God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Look forward to seeing you right back here on next week. God bless you. Amen and amen. What then? Stand to your feet. Come on. What then? Come on. Say it again. What then? Shall we say in response to this, if God be for us, who shall be against us? God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Wave at somebody on your way out the door and tell them, hey, it's good to see you. A great work, a great work in me.